Welcome and happy Chuseok everyone. Thank you for joining us on the seventh day of Bay Area Chuseok Festival for a cooking demo, Gaibichim Chuseok style. My name is Karina Park and I am the current chair of the board of directors at the Korean Center. I'm very pleased and excited to introduce our um, the instructor for today, Chef Jun Su Bae, who is the co-owner and uh, executive chef at Salad Restaurant in San Francisco. Jun Su is originally from South Korea, uh, but got his training from the Culinary Institute of, Mer of America in New York. He went on to work at some of the most famous restaurants, such as Gramercy Tavern in New York City and the restaurant at Meadowood in Napa Valley and most notably Noma in Copenhagen which is well known for its most defined cuisine. Junsu opened a side restaurant in early 2019 with his wife Hyun Young who also has a culinary background having worked at the French Laundry among other places. And for those who don't know what style it means, it means, Korean, uh, it means rice in Korean. Um, and the food Junsu and Hyunyoung serve, as they say, goes beyond the boundary of Korean culture. Today, Junsu is going to share with us uh, his recipe for Gaibi Jim, which is his family's favorite Chuseok meal made with chestnuts and other seasonal ingredients. Um, you should have received this recipe as you registered for this event, uh, but we will also post it here in the chat box. Um, now for some housekeeping items. Um, this is a Zoom webinar, which means your audio and video are turned off. Um, but we welcome any of your questions, so please type them into the Q&A screen. We'll review them and share them with uh, Junsu as we go along and at the very end um, during the Q&A session. So feel free to say hello and leave comments in the chat box, but please remember to use only the Q&A box for your questions. Thank you again and enjoy the program. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jun Sube, chef owner of the restaurant Sal, located in uh, San Francisco. Uh, today uh, I'm gonna cook in one of the uh, most popular and most common dish for Chuseok uh, called Galbi Jim, which means Korean bra uh, bra braised beef short rib uh, with a lot of fall vegetables. And yeah, let's check it out. Especially this is a very easy way uh, so you can follow uh the way and my goal of this cooking demo is i want you guys cook exactly this way so easy enough for you to follow this direction so i'm not going to uh, use much of the professional techniques uh i'm trying to avoid most of the, those guys uh those techniques so you can easily follow at home uh yeah let's start uh let's start with the uh the beef show rib uh, this is the beef short rib. Yeah. This is a beef short rib. Uh, first off, I'm just going to blanching the beef short rib. Just make sure uh, extra fat while uh, they're cutting with the band. So there could be some bone particles. And so let's blanch it first. I'll put the pot on. So here is, a, here is some of the tips. I've been noticed when I go out shop, uh, actually there's a lot of beef shori uh, sold in frozen form. Uh, if you can defrost it a day ahead, that's a great idea. But if it is a frozen, uh, just don't, uh, don't panic. Uh, in that case, you can bring up to boil when water is cold with your cold frozen uh, shori. So while it gets boiled, and then uh, it's gonna get deforested as well as 
the, the remove all the extra fat in the same time. Uh, since today I'm having a fresh beef short rib, uh, I'm just gonna wait, water comes up a little. Uh, or you know what, actually you can just dip it right now. I'll put this in hot water. Actually, this is the, uh, the one of the uh, key part because of the mostly garbage gym gets, uh, gets cloudy and not good enough because of the uh, lot of blood from the bone comes out while you're braising it. Uh, that's why this is such a, such a crucial part before you actually cooking into the, uh, the beef shori portion. Uh, and then uh, secondly, I'm trying to make a sauce but instead of putting everything in a, in a stock, I'm start making a, I call a stock, which is a flavored, uh, the soy sauce based, uh, the liquid. And here I have another pot. Uh, the recipe that I share uh, has a two quarts of cooking liquid, uh, which is water that you, you need. And I'll have another one quart here, and then please reserve another quarts for uh, the show rib. And then here's the, some of the crucial ingredient for the, for the, the stock. So I have a kombu here, uh, which is dashima, and then dried shiitake mushrooms, pyogobosat, uh, and this is the uh, bay leaf, uh, worge sweep. And I have a little bit of black pepper. Uh, here, I'll put this. So while the, the meat gets blanched, uh, all the flavor can comes out. And per recipe, uh, you will have the whole garlic, which I'm gonna use the whole garlic as well. And this is the ginger. I'm gonna put some ginger inside. Pardon? Yes. Uh, you can use this recipe with the boneless uh, beef short ribs, even LA style uh, garbi. And even you can use the oxtail or any kind of tough cut that can be, uh, can be you can uh, cook it for 40 minutes. A little bit of ginger here. And then here's the one secret that I'm using it. This is the, uh, the serrano pepper, which is the, uh, the spicy pepper. Uh, I'm gonna put this in to the stock. The purpose of this stock is the beef shorib is a, such a fatty cut. What it does is uh, while you're eating, it, you, you can easily feel too greasy. Uh, and then by adding some spiciness uh, to the, to the stock, uh, the liquid of the cooking liquid can be, probably you shouldn't be able to feel or, or taste much of the spice, but actually it's just cutting out some of the, the, the greasiness of the, uh, the cooking. The fat comes from the beef. And here's the apple. Also, this apple can be added a great uh, layer of flavor because apple has a sweetness as well as acidity. Uh, so whatever you use right now, obviously you're not gonna, you, you're not gonna taste it, but nobody gonna notice uh, either apple, can, apple has been used, but once I said, it's gonna add another layer of the flavor. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna be the skin. Uh, while you're using the stock, everything can be skin on it, with the ginger. And even onion, you can use a skin on onion. So I'll use some apples here. And half of the onion.
But obviously, most of you have seen uh, that a lot of stock can be made with a lot of big chunk of uh, the vegetables. The reason why I'm chopping small is I'm not gonna boil for like hours and hours. Uh, by the time meat is ready, I'm just gonna strain it off. So I'm trying to extract as much flavor and as fast as, as, fast as possible. Uh, and then, let's see, meat is boiling. See here? So now water is boiling. You will see a lot of uh, extra fats and impurities and uh, the extra stuff comes from the meat. And then you're gonna let it boil for a good five minutes. So make sure out layer of the, uh, the protein gets slightly tightened up and coagulate as well as the, all the blood from the bones. Make sure it gets, gets cooked off. So while you're braising it, it's not gonna coming out. Eventually it's gonna make your, uh, the garbage gym cloudy and unwanted flavor. So this is the, the stock that we are currently making. So both of can be uh, rolling boil. It doesn't really matter. This is a stock, this is a meat. So uh, you can just crank up the fla uh, flame as high as you can be. And then once it gets boiled stock, I'll turn it down, turn it down a little bit, just, just simmer. And, and then we're gonna start cutting some vegetables. Yes. Yes, uh, most of this ingredient, be honest with you, I'll point out the key ingredient. I love to use a Korean radish. You can use the daikon. Uh, this is a sugar, obviously you can use the white sugar. Uh, this is a Korean cor corn syrup. You can use uh, just corn syrup, rice syrup, any types of syrup. If, you're, if you don't have a syrup, you can even use a honey, but use it touch less than what recipe said. And then this is a soy sauce. Uh, there's a lot of different types of soy sauce in the market. Uh, in this case, I strongly recommend use a Korean soy sauce, but, but whoever has a limited access to the Korean soy sauce, you can find any closer, but not flavored soy sauce, which does not have much sugar in it. And actually these three are most important ingredient for the st stock. You can use Asian pears, even persimmons uh, instead of apples. Instead of onion, you can use a scallion leeks or Korean depa or even depa leeks. And garnishes, uh, this is uh, some of the, the fall vegetables that I can find in a farmer's market as well as a supermarket. But you can use anything. Uh, if you have a broccoli or Brussels sprouts and asparagus, uh, even different types of mushroom, or works. So I'm not really limited to a uh, Korean traditional lawyer cuisine style, but I'm just more uh, home cook friendly recipe. You can use any vegetables in your refrigerator. Yeah, uh, this is a Korean radish. Uh, one of the key parts. And then I'm gonna use slightly bigger chunk of it. So this here is my personal tip. You can just cut it big enough. That's it. And this is a kabocha squash, which is also in season right now. And Kabocha squash is a, such a very, very hard vegetables and a lot of home cooks are not even be able to cut it uh, without having very sharp knife. And my, my advice is if you microwave for two minutes, you can easily cut it. Uh, just microwave or two or three minutes. So partially you cook it in a microwave 
So you can easily carve it and, and cut it the way you like. And this is just a big chunk of, and then this is a little tip. I get the small mixing bowl. I'm just gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna collect all the scraps. Uh, who inspired me a chef? What inspired me a chef? Actually, I, I had a dream to becoming a chef when I was uh, about 12 years ago. I mean, 12, when I was in 12, 12. It was a middle, I was in a middle school. I always thought, what should I do for the rest of my life? And what should I do for a living? And then, and then back then, I was, I was really, really loved eating. And then becoming a chef, even the sh being a chef wasn't that famous back then. And then somehow I decided to be a chef. And I was falling in love with the cooking. And then the, the one of the biggest reason why is people always happy with the food. That's, that's not very deep philosophy like, but it was just fun. It's, I love to eat. I love to see people happy and that's, that's a great start to uh, think about being a chef. And obviously, I, yeah. Also, the reason why I'm cutting all, the, all these sharp edges is going to be while I'm boil, uh, braising it, all the corner, sharp corner will be overcooked. So it's, it's going to be all melted into the liquid. Eventually, then it's going to be coming out lagu la or like a, some types of vegetable porridge rather than uh, rather than clear uh, kalbi jim that we are willing to. Obviously, I mean lazy home cooks, you don't need to do this. But if you want to make your kalbi jim to a, another level, I highly recommend. And then let's do this little fast. And then also, I just want to ask to all the audience, uh, how many people actually uh, cooking along with this uh, cooking demo? I just want to know if there is any, anyone who's actually cooking along, please, please let me know through the, the, the chatting. So I can uh, slow it down or be more detailed while I'm, I'm cooking. And then also, if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment on the chatting so I can answer all of your cooking questions and, and comment. Yes, uh, even you can use a red radish, just make sure uh, you don't use a skin. Any kind of root vegetable is going to work. Uh, obviously, you can use a daikon, you can use a turnips, you can use well, I don't know about the hikama, but you can use like, even you can use a kohlrabi, which is a lot sweeter and has more of a, I would say pear texture rather than the reddish texture, but it's, it's gonna be great. But as I mentioned, you can use anything, everything. Okay. Yeah, I heard a lot of people actually cooking along so I'm gonna slow down a little bit. So the recipe that I share is about the about a pound of the beef shore Actually, I'm cooking uh, close to two pound or slightly over to two pound of beef shore rib. So you don't really need as much as I'm actually preparing right now.
Uh, no. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> Anybody else in my family has a in food business? No. Uh, actually, uh, my grandparents was the owner of the rice store. That's the reason why my restaurant name called Rice. Because. Uh, they had a the local rice store in uh, South Korea, Pohang, uh, in a local market, and I grew up uh, playing with the rice and legumes instead of play-doh. Basically, uh, all of my friends had a play-doh when they grew up, but I was always in my grandparents' rice store playing with the uh, black beans and, and and rice. That was my uh, the play-doh, and then sometimes I falling asleep uh, on top of like a packet of the rice because I was clean, climbing up when I was a kid. And, and obviously my parents wasn't uh, take over the rice store. And then I decided to become a chef and I was start thinking about my philosophy. Uh, what should I do? What's, what's the slogan? What makes me cooking? Or what kind of food am I gonna cook? And then I always thought about the rice, and then I, I was very, very picky about the, the varieties of rice, and I wasn't a kid that eating the day-old rice when I grew up eating. Uh, my mom was always screaming at me, and then, because I was so picky, I always loved to eat the fresh cooked rice. Actually, that's my uh, slogan of the, this restaurant. It is, it, this is a city of restaurant, uh, San Francisco, you will see uh, Tartin Bakeries here, a lot of coffee roasteries here, and then those guys are really focused on fresh baked bread, fresh brew coffee, fresh roasted coffee, but we have a great amount of Asian population in the city of San Francisco. None of those are really emphasizing what the real uh, fresh polished, fresh cooked rice tastes like, because I know you can easily find uh, what is that called? The partially cooked rice. You can easily uh, microwave. Those are taste great. I'm not lying. I enjoy eating it. But still, uh, as as a chef, as a as a Korean chef, I really wanted to introduce people what the real taste like the fresh cooked rice is. So that's how I uh, start the restaurant with the slogan. So you will get to taste. A lot of different types of rice, rice that source it locally, as well as cook very carefully. That's what I'm willing to do. Yes, this is a stock pot. Basically, all the uh, this is a bay leaf uh, tashima kombu, and two serrano peppers, and dry shiitakes and handful of whole garlic, black pepper. That's in a stock. And then here, this is a reason why I'm collecting all these. You will see, I'm gonna add rest of all these ingredients back to stock. Uh, for home cooks, not really. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, while I'm boiling this, all the corner gets broken into a small pieces, eventually your uh, braised beef shori gets very cloudy and it's gonna be like uh, unwanted like viscosity, which means it's, it's a higher chance for you to burn uh, rather than reducing the, the liquid. So here. So whenever I cook at home, I've noticed that you're always cutting something, but there is a good amount of scrap comes out. And then by collecting all this, adding back to the stock, which is makes your uh, stock taste better without having a uh, serious separate uh, the stock base.
Radish. Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, yes, but in this recipe, I'm not. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, someone asked me, is, is okay to add the radishes to tenderize the, the meat? Yes, you can, but in this recipe, I'm not uh, using any grinding uh, method. So I'm not using any blender or a uh, lot of different beef show rib recipe has like a ground pears and ground radishes, ground onion. But in this recipe, I'm not using uh, that technique because I don't want to use a blender, which requires me a good amount of cleaning. <laughs> so this is all the vegetable scraps. I'm just going to put it here's my, into my uh, stock. And then I'm going to add a little more water. Just make sure I'm get good amount of stock. And then here, I have a beef oil. So here, I'm just going to take it out. So I'm doing this because of uh, I have a limited access to the sink, but for whoever uh, cooking alone, you can just simply dump in your sink and then strain all the liquid and put it back in a pot. Uh, just that's a probably easier. So this water is going to be go away. And then this is a pre blanched. If your show ribs are extra fatty or greasy, this is a great chance for you to trim it. For example, this kind of cut, you can just cut the extra fat off, or you can use your scissors. So I'm adding a, another quarts of liquid that I reserved so easily, this is a half of the liquid. This is another half of liquid. And then while I'm cooking this, I'm going to strain this into here, which all the flavor into the liquid. And then here, I'm going to start adding all the ingredients. This is going to be the final part of the night. And this is a soy sauce, uh, two thirds of a cup. It's 170 grams of the soy sauce. And then this is a three tablespoon of the sugar. You can use a white sugar. In this case, I use a brown sugar, which also has a little bit of a, what is that molasses flavor. Uh, recipe called the three tablespoon. I'll use a Two and a half tablespoon, and then we'll see uh, later on. I'll add it because I don't want my beef show rib to be uh, too sweet. And then this is about a cup. So 290 grams of the Korean or corn syrup. You can find it anywhere, everywhere. It's going to be. Let's use the yes. spoon. Questions about rice? Yes. Or is it fresh?
Yes, I'll, let me answer. My secret to fresh cooked rice. That secret is you can source as fresh rice as can be, which means uh, you have to find the, the most recently polished rice from your local store. But I know uh, that's really hard to find. Uh, uh, as far as I know, there's not many stores sells uh, fresh polished rice, but for my opinion, I'm currently uh, eating Koshi Hikari varieties at home, which means, uh, which is uh, the sushi grade uh, rice from uh, Sacramento, California. Is that the brand name? Koshi Hikari is one of the, the species, one of the species name. Uh, you will see the Kalos uh, is a mid, uh, that's a mid, mid side grain. And then uh, Koshi Hikari is a short grain. Uh, yeah, someone asked me honey instead of corn syrup. Yes, uh, you can use the honey, but obviously honey is a sweeter than corn syrup. I strongly recommend use a touch less than one recipe set. And then also uh, one dice downside of it is by end of cooking, you might not gonna have as shiny as a corn syrup or uh, as the viscosity. The, you, you want like something sticky or shiny glaze, almost like a teriyaki sauce like texture, but by using it probably it's, it's hard to expect. In that case, I strongly recommend thicken up your liquid at the end of cooking with the, using a slurry, which is a little bit of a starch with the cold water and then you stir it really well and then you pour into the, the liquid, eventually it's gonna thicken up, it's gonna help. But Yes, honey is totally fine with the cooking. So here, now it's time to strain some of the, uh, the stock. So here's my galbi pot. This is my cooking liquid uh, stock. I'm gonna strain in or I'll put this way. So your liquid should be more, a lot more like this. Uh, either it covers up your beef or it should be very soapy, I mean soupy. Uh, and then eventually uh, beef requires about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes of cooking. Uh, it should be reduced it down uh, with all the flavors and flavor comes out from the beef as well as all the flavor from the stock. That's gonna be uh, mixed up and eventually it's gonna be the kabichim, that idea. And then here is some of the vegetables that we cook. And then you have to decide either which one is going to go into the stock uh, first. Obviously, kabucha is a, such a very tender and soft vegetables. I'm going to put it this vegetables probably 10 minutes, 10 minutes before you finish the cooking. This is a Korean radish. It's very, very hard, has a lot of moisture, but still really good with the braising. So this one, I'll put it right now. And so does carrot. So you're almost done. 80% of cooking is already done. So 
So all this, I want to leave it open because obviously I have to significantly, I have to reduce all this, this liquid down. So some of them has to be all evaporated. And for now, my uh, stove is the, the high. And then I'm gonna cut some garnishes as well as uh, decorations. This is the shiitake mushrooms. And I forgot to put this one in a, in a stock. I'll use it later. And then one uh, good tip is dry shiitake is really good for stock. Actually uh, has more flavor than fresh shiitake. If you wanna make a stock at home, uh, I recommend to use a dry shiitake rather than fresh shiitake. But the fresh stock is always better uh, while you're eating. So it just almost tastes like a, it tastes like a meat or texture like a meat. So uh, that's the that's a biggest difference. Also dry stock is also edible while after you're braising it, but texture isn't, isn't same as a fresh stock is. Here's a stock is. Obviously you can cut it harder or if you see a lot of cool Korean cooking, you will see a lot of different star shape. You can do here. Yeah, this is some cool shape. And then all these vegetables you can cut however you like. Jan asked me, am I gonna use the stock leftovers? Uh, Obviously, I didn't extract the hundred percent of flavor uh, after you're cooking it. I think you can make uh, pour the cold water one one more time, and then I, I'm sure you can make a stock for different use. But for the vegetable stock, I recommend you're simmering, boiling, maximum forty to fifty minutes. Uh, cut up show rib. First of all, you can go butcher shop. You can ask for it. Uh, you can ask for one inch, two inch. Uh, if you want to be your cooking time to be short, you can cut it short. Uh, obviously, there is an LA style show rib, which means an eighth of or half inch of thick slice. You can use it. Obviously, uh, your cooking is going to be finished way faster. Uh, if you go Korean market, Asia market, I've seen China mar Chinese market, you can find everywhere. Uh, if it's not, always you can ask for uh, the butchers, uh, local butcher shop uh, to be cut that way. Also, you can use a uh, oxtail and yeah, you can, you can find anything, everything. After what? Oh, the sh as as in a shoot. Yeah, someone asked me the the adding a sugar and corn syrup after boiling. Uh, for the home cooks, it's not gonna make huge difference. I know uh, for seasoning wise, you always add the sugar first, then salt. That's the that's the rule because the sugar makes all the protein seasoning easily. And then once you season with the sugar, the meat is not gonna absorb much of the, the sugar afterwards. 
But in this case, we are brazing hard for 40, good 40 minutes. And by my experience, it's not gonna make any, any much difference. Nobody gonna notice, oh, you season, season soy sauce first or you season with the sugar first. So you can add any time. So I'm not, I'm gonna add these shiitake mushrooms right, right now. So your broth can be benefit from all the flavor uh, comes from shiitake mushrooms. And, and meantime, I'm gonna skim it a little bit. Even though I already blanched the meat, it's a good amount of fat and all these dark parts. Cooking beef short rib is always uh, kind of fighting with the fat. Uh, you're gonna notice uh, at the end of cooking, you will see a lot of fat layers. Uh, that's the reason why you're, you have to skim it uh, as often as possible. Uh, so you end up being less greasy uh, beef short ribs. And then this is a Korean jujubes. You can find in a Chinese market, Korean market, all kind of Asia market, jujubes, especially, actually I saw the fresh jujubes in a local farmer's market last, uh, last Saturday. Uh, you can find the fresh jujubes in a market. This is a dry, dried one, uh, one of the traditional Korean garnishes. I will show you how they may make it. I'm just gonna cut it. There is a seed in the center and then I'm gonna just peel it this way. So this is a, the center. Obviously it's not edible. Yes, uh, same procedure with the oxtail, yes. Oxtail has also a lot of fat, so you can use the follow exactly the same direction. And I strongly recommend for the, whoever use the oxtail for braising it, uh, you can actually cut it off the excess fat before you're cooking it. So you start with the less fat, so you're, you're, you don't really need to take much fat off while you're cooking. So this is a jujubes. And then the center is like some, some very sticky, spongy-like and I'm gonna roll it tight. This is a, like a roll cake. And then once you cut it, You're gonna see some cool snail shape jujubes. Uh, I go to San Francisco Ferry Building Farmers Market every Saturday morning. Uh, and here is some cool shape Korean jujubes, which I'm gonna use for the garnish later on. And then here today, I prepare some jujubes and Korean rice cake. Korean rice cake, also you can find it. This is a Korean rice cake. And this is another one. This is a Korean chili thread, uh, which is a dried chili, uh, cut it into a strength, uh, string, but obviously it has a touch of hint. That's about it. So you don't need to go out buy it. This is not a crucial ingredient, but it always makes your cabbage look cool. And this is a ginkgo nut, uneng. Uh, this is also one of the fall, uh, I would say vegetables. Yeah, it's a, it's a nut from a ginkgo trees. I have a great memory of the harvesting ginkgo nuts 
when I was young with my parents. But only downside of it is it smells really bad while it gets harvested. And actually, this is another of my favorite ingredient is a roasted chestnut. Uh, this is a season of chestnut. Uh, I, saw, uh, I saw this one, $9 per pound, in a KNJ orchard last Saturday farmer's market. Uh, only cool, actually, when you cook the roast chestnut with a sharp knife, you poke the center, and then you, you're going to roast it. Uh, you're going to roast about 350 oven for 20 to 30 minutes. And then you cool completely. And then uh, you can peel it. But for lazy home cooks, actually it sells in a, in a market, supermarket. It's pre-roasted, easy to, easy to peel, ready to eat. So you can use that. Uh, this is all the garnishes for today. And yeah, just waiting for waiting this garbage gym to be reduced and you're 90% done. Uh, please give me uh, any questions or comments. Can you talk about the challenges with starting a restaurant business in the restaurant business? Starting a, uh, someone asked me the, the starting challenges to start the restaurant in San Francisco. Actually, yes, there is a lot of challenges, especially in San Francisco, it's the labor cost. Uh, I was working in New York City for about 10 years as a professional chef. Uh, obviously, New York City's minimum wage is uh, way less than the city of San Francisco. Uh, and also, city of uh, New York City has a great uh, street cooking uh, culinary schools around the, the city. So you can source uh, great, great young cooks are just coming out of the uh, school that you can easily find uh, your restaurant. But especially the San Francisco has a lack of uh, professional education. So I can really having a hard time to sourcing the talented chef or professionally trained chef that, uh, so always basic is the most important part. So to, to go further, I need to find very uh, talented, potentially uh, promising cooks but it's really hard to source in the city of San Francisco and as well as a minimum wage. It's the most expensive the city in the United States. Okay, another question about uh, Nomad World Trade Restaurant. Yes. Any uh, memorable experiences, stories from your time working at Nomad? Yes. Uh, someone asked me about my, my background. Uh, Back in 2009, I was lucky enough to, to be part of the kitchen, uh, world best restaurant, uh, Noma, located in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, actually, I uh, flew in the day after my culinary school graduation. So it was, it was cold winter. I, had, I never experienced Europe. I just took a flight and then back to the Denmark. And I was young. It was even, what, 12 years ago. I had no idea what to do. It was very, probably the most hardest my kitchen experience because you're working star from eight in the morning and then you're working until two in the morning. So you only get to sleep how many hours? It's like, you're just away from the kitchen for only six hours, but I had a really bad jet lag. And then basically I couldn't be able to sleep for, for first entire month. It just, just drives me crazy. Uh, and the work, it was very intense. Uh, there's about 60 people in the kitchen uh, without getting paid. And yeah, that's it. It was very competitive uh, and hard kitchen, kitchen job. That was it. Uh, yes, for the COVID period. I mean, not even us. I'm sure all the restaurants in the United States, even all the restaurants in, uh, in the world are uh, challenging, especially the restaurant in such a 
such a high crowded business. So we cannot open our doors without having people inside. And uh, first COVID was outbreak. Uh, we had to shut our restaurant down for a couple of weeks. And we thought about it, what we can do or what should we do? And I, we, we had to make a decision pretty quick. And then we decide to downgrade our, ourselves. So we stopped what, uh, what we, we have served. And then we came up with the idea, what travels better, uh, what people like more easily and common, what, 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 we, what we can serve. And then we come up with the Korean fried chicken idea. So uh, the day of your opening, we are turning entire restaurant into a Korean fried chicken. Uh, and, and last five, six months, we are doing okay uh, financially. Uh, that's it, we still serve the Korean fried chicken. I'm cooking this food, but by tomorrow noon, I'm start frying chicken. Uh, for indoor plans. Yes, we are willing to, uh, to, to welcome our guests to uh, indoors, but city of San Francisco allow us only 25% of uh, capacity for this size of the restaurants. We only can accept 11 people, uh, which is not gonna, the, that metric is not gonna work for us because uh, if 11 diners are in the restaurant, in the same time, I do not want to serve our food to delivery because all the diners who's dining here in here is going to get bothered by all the deliveries and uh, takeout. And so once we can be able to open 100% of our uh, indoor dining, yes, definitely. But for now, uh, it's not going to, that, that, that ratio is not going to work for us. Uh, the, Amy, Amy asked us uh, how we can order the food from us. Yeah, obviously you can uh, order through the DoorDash, Uber Eat, Caviar, even Talk uh, in time advance for either pickup or delivery. And also you can call us in a restaurant uh, for, for order. Also, actually, there's a lot of good portion of the customer who just walking by and stop and ordering because we are such a, such a busy restaurant and we are selling a good amount of chicken. So starting noon to 8.30 p.m., we are just constantly keep frying chicken. So we are not frying chicken by order. We are constantly uh, frying it. Once you just come here and order it, I'll just give you the chicken uh, actually, somebody else's chicken, you, you first, because you're in a line and waiting for the chicken. And then uh, next batch of chicken goes to the delivery. So, Kiki, Kiki is asking, would you recommend using a pressure cooker to shorten the cooking time? Yes, that's a great tool. The pressure cooker. Yes, someone asked me about the pressure cooker. Uh, pressure cooker is going to be the great option, actually. Uh, pressure cooker. My mom would cook this in a pressure cooker. That's, what, that's exactly what I grew up uh, eating it. By using a pressure cooker, obviously your uh, cooking liquid should be significantly less than what I use. Because pressure cooker is just closed lead with cooking with the pressure. Uh, it's gonna tenderize the meat in a short period of time. So I probably I, I cut down about, about at least 40 or 50% of cooking liquid less than what I, what I use today. And uh, beef, the pressure cooker, I'm thinking about cooking in 20 minutes should enough, and then uh, should enough, enough for tenderize all the beef short ribs. And keep in mind, you shouldn't put uh, kabocha squash or your uh, tender vegetables, otherwise it's gonna get all cooked up, overcooked, and it's gonna come out with the very moussey and soft vegetables. Uh, Justin, 
Justin ask me any branches in LA? Yeah, sounds like sounds like my friends in LA, my Dr. Justin Rim. Uh, I mean, for now, no plans. Uh, I'm always think the kitchen should have uh, the restaurant sh always should have the chef. And then obviously having a restaurant here. And I mean, first off, I do not have any plan to open uh, the restaurant requires a chef uh, without me inside. So I'm not, a sh I'm not, I'm more of chef rather than business perspective. Uh, I always wanted to be in the kitchen and welcoming the guest. I think that's a core value of the restaurant. So if I opening a branches, possibly if, uh, if I have a great chef and then I would encourage him to open it, uh, but he's gonna in charge of it. It's not gonna be me. Uh, someone asked me if I'm gonna cook on other Korean Zoom classes. Probably, uh, if I'm lucky enough, by next year, if you do the Korean Chuseok event in what Presidio, actually you're gonna you're gonna see us actually live live cooking in person to person. Uh, please join us next year for Chuseok Festival. In it's gonna be in a Golden Gate Park or Presidio. Yes, Presidio next year. Uh, please come visit, come visit San Francisco. Yes, trend trend in yeah Korean food trend in U.S. I think it start booming. It uh, I was one of the witness in New York City. Uh, New York City. I would say Korean food in New York City is probably the the peak. Uh, they're as popular as Japanese Italian cuisine, which is shocking. I couldn't imagine in three four years ago. But there's a lot of uh, great talented Korean chef are opening with a great concept. Uh, most of them is my colleagues and friends, but they are so confident. Uh, they're young, very ambitious. Uh, they're uh, they're accepting challenges, but they're putting so much effort. Uh, that's why New York City's uh, Korean food is probably as good as either LA or, or Korean, but in their New Yorker way, there is a great, great Korean restaurants. But San Francisco, I'm thinking sh can be more. Uh, it's not as much as other New York City or uh, LA. Uh, there is only a handful of Korean restaurants operating, but I want to see more young generations of the chefs and uh, restaurant tours are opening uh, the Korean Korean restaurants more than you know franchise Korean restaurant from Korea. Yes, here it's getting there. We are boiled about what. 15 minutes here. Oh, it tastes good. Uh, here, is a, here is one tip. If your meat is smaller than ours, smaller than, than this, and you feel like your meat is ready and then and your liquid is uh, somewhat bland, what I recommend is pour the liquid into another pot uh, without keep cooking your meat and then you reduce it, separate, and then you pour back into the pot so you end up having good texture uh, of the final product rather than you have like either soupy or undercooked or overcooked. So here is, here is you need your some trick depending on your, your strengths of your stove and amount of liquid and yeah. But so far so good. But we need another 15 minutes. Yes. Is it done?
Yes, someone asked me about the Korean, uh, my, uh, my experience at CIA. Uh, yeah, obviously I came to United States uh, to attend the CIA. Uh, my experience was somewhat tough because I couldn't speak English much. And, and yeah, because I never really worked in a kitchen before I came to United States. And that was my first kitchen experience as well as the, uh, the, the, the living in a dormitory with all American friends was a somewhat, there's a lot of like a cultural shocking. So it was tough, but I think I had a great experience with the, uh, all, the, all the colleagues, especially cooking. Uh, the weekend with all these people was, was a fun and I really enjoy my uh, campus life. Uh, was there? Yeah. Was, uh, yeah, actually, when I was at CIA, there was a lot of Korean people was, was there. I was a president of Korean Association. Uh, uh, we are the, the biggest uh, foreign student population by ratios, as well as the, uh, how much was it? There's a, close to 100 Korean students was attending the school while I was there. So entire school was slightly over 3,000 people, but about 100 people was Korean. Okay. Uh, that's a, it's a good amount of my friend who came from Korea, uh, went back to Korea, and then uh, I couldn't be, I mean, I didn't have much of the Korean American friends because in Korean Americans are, I think the, the being a CIA is not as popular. And then somehow the CIA was getting very popular in Korea. So most of my friends are from Korea. Yes. Uh, someone asked us our grill deal. Yes, we are actually currently offering a uh, beef short rib, which is a slightly different version than these. And actually we are serving live eels. Uh, we are sourcing from Maine, East Coast. Uh, we are serving it. And actually for American Thanksgiving, uh, we are preparing uh, uh, dry aged our uh, Liberty Farm duck with the truffle porridge that we are planning. So it's coming about a month away. Uh, but obviously that's a pre-order only. And we're gonna use some Liberty Farm that we source from locally, from Petaluma. And we're gonna age about two weeks. And then we're gonna roast it with the uh, Chocheong glaze on top. And porridge, I'm using uh, black truffles. That's, that's gonna be the idea for now, but we'll see. Yeah. Can you talk about that experience? Yes. Uh, the last week, I was lucky enough to invite it by a, a Korean general consulate to to Korean cooking event, uh, and I was lucky enough to be a, one of the judge. And then I attended the the ceremony. It was it was great to see a lot of Americans who has a passion about Korean cu cuisine and cooking. It was it was somewhat uh, something that I never really. Uh, imagine their approaches, their so different angles of the Korean cuisine was great opportunity for me to understand what their Korean food, what's the, the Korean food they thought about it. And then, and then it was actually surprised the fact that the winner wasn't Korean. And, uh, and then the, the winner was so confident cooking and I really enjoy it. And then future of the Korean food in San Francisco is going to be some, some upright. That's what I, what I thought. Yes. The reason why actually I'm cooking galbi, galbi is my Korean favorite food. Uh, I grew up eating every Chuseok or Korean uh, New Year's. I was eating galbi jim, exactly this version, but cooked by my mom in a pressure cooker. Uh, so 
every this season. Korean beef shore rib is such a such an expensive ingredient. Uh, even even this United States Korean traditional Korean hanu is very expensive. So it's not something that you can eat daily basis. Uh, but I always enjoy eating uh, Korean Thanksgiving. My mom always made the uh, made made this dish. Here I'll get the. Another pot. I'm gonna pour some li extra liquid. So I'm gonna reduce it faster. Uh, like, we're going to reduce it five, uh, five to ten minutes. Okay, so after this, I'm just going to play with all this ingredient. Uh, it's actually it's a great time to add this, these vegetables. So kabocha is going to be in. And then I'm going to put some uh, rice cakes inside. Uh, someone asked me how to come up with my menu items. Uh, mostly my experience plus uh, the Korean traditional food. Uh, I grew up in South Korea for 20 years and I've been in this United States about 10 years, over 10 years. And then that's a great mixture. So my background as a Korean and professional chef in the United States, uh, that's a great, uh, great mixture of the, uh, the menu items. So that's my inspiration. And I'm always just trying to look at the traditional Korean food with the, the American professional chef's perspective. So somewhat, if I can use some professional techniques, I'll use that, especially our beef show rib, not this version, the currently what we serve, uh, we are taking a meat part of the meat and then we are sous vide, uh, sous vide in in a vacuum seal with a lower temperature, about 24 hours. So it tenderized the meat. And then while we are grilling and slicing it, it's, it's just somewhat like a medium steak. And then the bone parts get uh, braised uh, in traditional way. So it's gonna be the combination uh, of my traditional way and the professional way. And then here uh, we are mostly done. And then I think it's meat is tender enough. I'll Here I'll put the cabo china back. I'll use some of the, the liquid. Yes, uh, this is a, the same mixture. Uh, I feels like soy and uh, the corn syrup mixture. So kabucha is cooking separate. And then I think this is a meat is tender enough. Let's uh, let's plate in here. 
This is the uh, Kinko nut. So here I'm going to use the uh, Korean breastware. So we are running out little time here and then meat is tender enough. So I'll show you how to plate. So this is a short rib. Obviously this is a little presentation and I recommend not to fill the pans and pot, I mean the plate more than a, more than a 70%. Yeah, Mia asked me if if it is okay, uh, the meat is falling off the bones. That's, it's a great clue your, your meat is tender enough. So uh, in this point, falling off the bone, which signs you're great, okay. So it's totally okay. And then just make sure your liquid is not too cloudy. And then uh, you're focusing more on vegetables not to get overcooked. Uh, that's it. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of cooking liquid. One more time, questions, so, please. So are there other recipes that you recommend using similar ingredients that you use here today? Uh, Yes, other recipes you recommend, uh, I mean, me recommend using these similar recipes. Always, once you have a leftover, if you add in gochukaru, it's gonna be the great version of spicy, uh, spicy gobi jim, which is very popular for younger generation in San Francisco right now. Uh, and by pulling all the meats and vegetables, and tomorrow you can use, uh, you can just serve on top of the rice. It's gonna be the great lunch for your families and friends and for the, uh, for doshirak. So this is some chestnut. And this is the uh, just jujubes that we cut earlier. Is the ginkgo nut fresh? Is the ginkgo nut is fresh uh, that I just bought from the Korean market. It was in a vacuum seal. It was a small portion. Uh, it was uh, fairly uh, affordable. So this is. Oh, this bowl is a Korean uh, tradition of breastware. Uh, when we opened the restaurant, I, I, I brought it from uh, South Korea. It's really hard to find in here. So this is a kabocha squash. This is a some of ginkgo nut. And lastly, some chili thread. Yeah. This is it. This is the final plate of the day. It's a kalbi gym in with the full vegetables. And, and that's it. And thank you so much for joining me uh, at Chuseok Festival. And if you enjoy the program uh, and would like to support the festival and KCI's work in community, please consider to make a donations. Uh, you, can, you can find a click link under the chatting uh, or you can visit the Korean Center's website. Uh, and tomorrow in the same time, a uh, Korean fox painting called Minhwa, artist. Her name is Kate Nam. 
I'm not sure it's either ladies or gentlemen, or Kate Nam will be presenting Korean fox painting uh, tomorrow this time. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, please uh, come sign and join us for tomorrow uh, to see another beautiful Korean cultures. Uh, and also we still have five more days of Korean festivals and there's a lot of events happening. Uh, please come check it out on our website, koreancentersf.org, uh, or you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, that's it, thank you so much and happy Chuseok everyone, thank you.